Secondhand Elvis. So I first remember hearing the name of Elvis, Elvis Presley, and associating it with his voice when I was about eight years old. And I remember it being a dark winter night in the Philadelphia suburbs, and the vinyl seats of the car were ice cold, and we were listening to the radio. And I'm not sure what song it was, because I was too young, but I think it might have been Kentucky Rain, because that came out around that time. But uh, I do remember that the voice had a unique quality. It had a dark sort of richness and resonance, and it sounded masculine. And I was a kid, I, when I was a kid I played the piano, but I didn't really like singers. There was something about singing that was sort of embarrassing to me, like I was, I, I would never sing. And there were, I always thought there was something preposterous about singers. Like opera singers, they always sounded like they were kind of shrieking or bellowing. And most of the pop singers on the radio sounded like they were whining or croaking. But this guy, Elvis, he sounded right. He was the way I thought a man should sound. It was sort of the perfect amalgamation of tenderness and grit. So the song concluded, and my mom said, that's Elvis Presley. I used to know him. And she told me the story. Of course, the idea of her going on a date with Elvis Presley, that didn't really register because I was only eight years old, and I didn't really know about the birds and the bees yet. That was still uh, a few years off. So... Anyway, the point being is that I've grown up as the kid whose mom went out with Elvis. And I'm not going to tell that story here. But it did have a great effect on my perception of the man. And from my mother's account, I got the sense that Elvis Presley was a, he was a fundamentally good person. And that notion stuck with me no matter what dirt I read about him after his death. So, who was this Elvis? I had no visual reference back then. Uh, a year later, I saw him on the Aloha from Hawaii satellite special. And that was in 1973, about nine years old. And he was seen by over a billion people worldwide because of satellite technology, satellite communications. And it was sort of like watching the moon landing. It was a big deal. You know, My dad was out of town. My mom let me stay up and watch it. And this is when Elvis was the king. He was a, the mature Elvis at the at the peak of his powers. He was like a he was like God. And uh, it took a while for a more complete image to coalesce. I didn't I didn't really get it. So you have to remember that this was the early to mid '70s, and there was no YouTube. Um, Elvis was one of the few artists that was big enough to have their own televised specials. But these these were these were special events, and you had to watch them when they aired on CBS or NBC or ABC. We didn't even have VCRs yet back in the 70s. You couldn't tape anything. So anyway, my awareness of Elvis started when my dad used to watch Johnny Carson. And there was a comedian on the Johnny Carson show. I'm not sure. It must have been Andy Kaufman or some, or I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, the guy was imitating Elvis, and from the imitation, I could tell that Elvis was supposed to be this super cool guy who made the girls scream. And then, to confuse things even more, there was that episode of Happy Days right about the same time, the, the old 50s television sitcom. So a brief synopsis of that episode. Okay, do you guys remember the Fonz, Arthur Fonzarelli on Happy Days? So the Fonz has to sing in a talent show, and he's scared to death. He thinks that singing isn't cool, so Richie Cunningham decides to help him out. And he tries to help the Fonz by giving him an, an example of a cool singer. Elvis, of course. So the Fonz agrees that Elvis is cool, and Elvis will be his role model for the talent show. And in the climactic scene, the Fonz takes the stage at Arnold's, the, uh, the diner, wearing a white fringed jumpsuit that is sort of like a parody of Elvis's jumpsuits from the 70s, like the one he wore on the Hawaii show. And it was kind of strange because here we have a, a TV sitcom that was made in the 70s that's all about nostalgia for the 50s, but the nostalgic imitation references a jumpsuit at Elvis from 20 years in the future, so it's like quantum physics. And so, uh, anyway, the Fonz is standing on the stage 
at Arnold's in his white fringe jumpsuit, and he goes into a very atonal rendition of Heartbreak Hotel. After a brief moment of panic, he enacts the magic of Elvis. When he's wearing that suit and he, he puts on that persona, all he has to do is strike a pose, cock his hip, curl his lip, and the girls all scream. So I was about 12 years old when this happened, and at the age of 12, I thought that Elvis was sort of supposed to be like the Fonz, 